苦しいほど君が好きだ私を君の女にしてほしいジョーロ大好き私ジョーロの彼女になりたい私を未来永劫そばにいさせてください恋人としてうわめちゃくちゃ嬉しいけどこのタイミングでは<笑>さすが私のお友達ねジョーロ君頑張ってね Nothing is more enraging when a good series ends abruptly and horribly, but it happens all too often in anime. Budgets are cut short, and second seasons aren't signed, leaving viewers out in the cold. Even popular series beloved by many are not immune to ripping out the hearts of their fans. <coughs> Let's take a look at all of those soul crushing moments, shall we? Before we start, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring that bell icon and set us all to be notified about our latest videos. At number 10, we have Handshakers. Over the course of 12 episodes, Handshakers skates the line between infuriating and fascinating nonsense. Initially, Gohan's original series seemed primed to become one of the industry's quintessential, so bad, it's good creations. However, any positives were long gone by the time the finale aired. For those fortunate enough to have it never sat through this train wreck, the awkward title refers to partners adept at summoning weapons by linking their hands. Known as Handshakers, these teams participate in a battle royale to decide who deserves a meet and greet with God. Along the way, Kaiori and Tazuna, the anime's primary shakers, dispatch various opponents leading to their final battle against Daichi Nagaoka and Kaiori's emotionless sister Mayumi. Similar to every other fight in the series, the choreography is sloppy and devoid of any real impact. Despite Kaiori's history with Mayumi, The heroes are surprisingly calm throughout this encounter. For the most part, Handshaker's finale is no worse than any other episode in the series. So, why is it on the list? Well, the anime answers none of its own questions. At the end of the core, audiences know basically nothing about the Battle Royale, God, or even the Handshakers. The series merely ends with Kaiori and Tazuna preparing to compete against more opponents, bringing little to no closure to their journey. As an extra helping of terribleness, After breaking free of Nagoaka's drug fueled dominance, Mayumi opts to stay with her captor because every villain must be redeemed, regardless of whether it makes any sense. Furthermore, Kaiori is perfectly fine with it. Ikuta no tatakai yo koe, shiren wo koe eru mono, keiji wo uke shi mono, ware ni mami e, idoman to suru mono. So a hand shaker, nante ne? At number 9, we have Trinity Blood. After all, the pretty animation of Trinity Blood lies a jumbled, messy story, so it's no surprise that the ending made as much sense as the rest of the anime. The source material is rather hefty, and to fit such a large story and world into only 24 episodes seems like such a daunting task. In the last episode, the series seems to rush through events without exactly explaining what is happening. Father Night Road is killed within the first five minutes, and we see leaders of the Methuselah and the Vatican agreeing to peace. In the next five minutes, we see Night Road bursting from his coffin to fight his brother Kane. During the fight, it cuts to a flashback of Kane and Abel as young boys after a fight. Lilith comes to comfort Abel while a young Seth looks on. One thing the story never makes clear is that Lilith is not, in fact, Abel's mother, but is actually their older sister. From here on, the story sprints through events. Night Road and Kane fly into the sky and disappear. Night Road is revealed to be alive and pursuing Kane, and nothing in the previous episodes is explained, leaving audiences to tilt their heads in confusion and wonder what they just watched. The saddest part about Trinity Blood is that the original light novels and illustrations are amazing and could never have been contained to a mere 24 episodes. The director should have planned out the story better as well as explain who and what people are. As a result, horrible pacing of the plot, the ending rushes to tie everything into a nice happy ending while hoping viewers don't ask too many questions. Number 8, we have Myriad Colors Phantom World. Myriad Colors Phantom World's flaws run deeper than an uneven ending or a rushed final arc. Kyoto Animation is responsible for some truly masterful series, and Musaga no Phantom World contains the occasional moment of brilliance. Unfortunately, the anime suffers from an identity crisis. An outbreak causes people to gain the ability to see phantoms and subsequent generations inherit supernatural powers to help fight these entities. Initially assumed to be yokai, phantoms are actually manifestations of a person's cognition. Crucially, 
Haruhiko has the ability to summon phantoms, meaning the world is really a blend of fantasy and reality. This point only comes into play during the last two episodes. Musaiga no Phantom World's final chapters introduce a government conspiracy, a villain who suddenly wants to take over the world, a hacker necessary to further the plot, and ends on a big explosive fight devoid of intensity. Musaga no Phantom World wastes so much time pretending to be an irreverent comedy that the characters' motivations are barely fleshed out once shit hits the fan. At number 7 we have Comet Lucifer. A completely original anime, ones not based on a pre-existing property, are rare and should be cherished. 8-Bit's Comet Lucifer serves as a fascinating case study of the perils associated with blindly copying genre tropes. In this instance, Mecha, without truly comprehending the mechanics that make them work. Stepping into the role of the bland teenage protagonist whose defining trait is their status as the main character. Sogo is fascinated with Griftium, a crystal-type substance precious to inhabitants of the planet Gift. One random day, Sogo stumbles across Felia, a powerful but passive girl who wants to grant a Mecha to the protagonist. Obviously, bad guys want to capture Felia to abuse her powers. Comet Lucifer's pilot episode shows a hint of promise, but the pretty visuals are not enough to mask the appalling storytelling and forgettable characters. While the anime is never good, an okay ending should have been enough to secure an average grade. And that does not happen. Predictable endings are bad enough without throwing in a healthy helping of stupidity. Out of nowhere, Comet Lucifer's bug-like main villain sends Earth, yes, our Earth, nearly crashing into Gift, while Felia finally stops being a doormat and actually takes control from Sogo to fight the final boss. Unfortunately, this is only done because Felia needs to be sacrificed to allow Sogo to live. Felia, the only reason to stick around until the end, disappears and takes Comet Lucifer's potential with her. Felia. At number 6 we have Akame Ga Kill. Following White Fox's anime in real time was a rather captivating experience as a vocal part of the community gradually turning against Akame Ga Kill. By the time the 24th episode was broadcast, the rhetoric surrounding the violent action series completed its transition from unlimited optimism to angsty disregard. Part of the revolutionary army seeking to eliminate the prime minister, the night raid consists of assassins willing to do evil for the greater good. Such a life naturally brings its fair share of death, a fact embraced too wholeheartedly by Akame Ga Kill. Rather than focusing on carving a multi-layered political conflict pivoting around different ideologies, Akame Ga Kill elects to perform a mass cleaning of its roster. Akame Ga Kill uses death to mask the narrative's lack of drive and character development, particularly in the case of the generic male lead Tatsumi and the eponymous Akame. Regardless of the revolution's outcome, nobody wins in the end. Number 5. Erased in recent years, no other ending diminished an anime's reputation quite as severely as Erased. For the best part of 12 episodes, A1 Pictures' adaptation took viewers on a thrilling adventure laced with mystery, tension, and heartbreak. A detached manga artist with not much going on in his life, Satoru Fujinuma, picks up a neat little ability to leap back in time, which allows the mangaka to prevent a couple of potential tragedies. The protagonist only goes back a few minutes, but one particular incident sends Satoru back 18 years. Long story short, Satoru figures the only way to stop the future tragedy is to prevent the kidnap and murder of one of his classmates, a girl by the name of Kayo Hinazuki. As the main character desperately attempts to figure out the identity of the serial kidnapper, Satoru forms a friendship with the emotionally distant Kayo. A good mystery presents all the necessary clues to the audience, so they could potentially stitch the pieces together for themselves. A great mystery combines these pieces in an unexpected yet logical way. A poor mystery just gives up and blames the butler. Erased went with the last one. Gaku Yashiro, Satoru and Kayo's homeroom teacher, is the most obvious candidate for the serial kidnapper. In other words, he is the last person Erased should have picked. 
To make matters worse, the ending does a horrible job of explaining Yashiro's motivations, particularly when it comes to his decision to keep Satoru alive for 15 years. And number 4, School Days. School Days ending is the stuff of genius. Based on an equally insane visual novel, TNK's anime would have been instantly forgotten if it were not for the outrageous and unintentionally hilarious final scene. School Days is a harem centering around Makoto Ito, an infuriating teenager incapable of keeping it in his pants. To be exact, School Days is a deconstruction of the harem genre. In the first episode, the protagonist starts to date the girl of his dreams, Kotonoha Katsura, and then proceeds to cheat on her with Sekai Sayonji. Eventually, Sekai becomes pregnant and the two begin to date. Due to allowing his wrong head to do all the thinking, Makoto cheats on Sekai with Kotonoha. These three deserve each other, don't they? Along with being incredibly unlikable, Makoto is also an annoyingly passive character who basically stumbles his way into a love triangle. As the series progresses, Makoto's actions cause Kotonoha and Sekai's mental health to decline, leading to one of the most shocking endings of all time. Sekai stabs Makoto to death and turns his head into a keepsake. It's awesome. Obviously, the ending is laughable. However, it is the only reason School Days continues to be mentioned to this day. At number 3 we have Full Metal Alchemist. The original series aired before the actual author knew how he was going to end the manga, leaving the writers to pick up the pieces and make their own ending. Despite having 51 episodes to build up to a decent finale, viewers got a slap to the face instead. In order to save his brother Al, Ed throws himself through the gates to exchange the memories of his journey for Ed's body and into what appears to be Germany during World War II. He meets with his father and they end up living happily ever after, I guess? Meanwhile, Al remembers nothing of Ed and appears as he was when he first disappeared. Only Winry is left to take care of her poor friend. The series attempted to make amends by releasing a movie dedicated to Ed's time in Germany and his attempts to make it back from which he came, but the plot was so spotty and all over the place it lacks any real substance. In addition, the result was ultimately the same and Ed went back to Germany. Thank God Brotherhood was released years later so fans could experience the series and the ending they deserved. At number 2 we have Berserk. Based on the manga of the same name, Berserk is the favorite son of the anime world that everyone loves to hate. After watching Guts and Griffith's relationship grow, Griffith is enveloped in jealousy after being severely wounded and tortured. Griffith ultimately decides to turn his back on Guts and his companions in order to seek power as a demon. His former friends now serve as blood sacrifices for his cause and are quickly killed and eaten one by one. Guts remains the last man standing when Casca is revealed to him naked. Guts makes an attempt to go to her, but is bitten and held by his arm. The blood egg cracks open and Griffith, now a demon, emerges only to rape Casca. In a desperate act to save Casca, Guts cuts his own arm off, but is immediately held down by tentacles as he is forced to watch Griffith finish the job. The credits then roll and the final episode ends. The worst part about Berserk is the fact that after the story final makes its way into the meat of the story and Griffith emerges as the enemy, the story ends. The whole anime feels fit to be a prologue to some epic tale of revenge, but viewers are cut off at the immediate climax. Whenever I encounter someone who has recently seen Berserk, I often am asked the question, was that it? Tell me there is an ending. I have to sadly shake my head and deliver the bad news. And at number one, we have Neon Genesis Evangelion. Everyone has heard of Evangelion, even if they haven't watched it. Evangelion is a classic and changed the way people viewed animation for a very long time. But the ending is indescribable. The last scene has Shinji sitting in a chair surrounded by the entire cast throughout the series clapping. Viewers often wonder if they have gone insane once the series has been finished. Hideaki, the director, even received death threats via mail from fans demanding a real ending. He answered their cries with the movie Death and Rebirth, which left fans fuming even more. If you ever have the pleasure of watching this amazing series, you should just forget about the ending or you may end up bursting a vein in your forehead. A great ending can elevate a mediocre story to new heights, but the same holds true in reverse. In terms of overall quality, these 10 anime run the gamut, but they all conclude on rather controversial notes. Which ending retroactively ruins an anime? Please let us know in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to like, share, and definitely don't forget to subscribe. And if you would like to, consider becoming a Patreon. It really helps me out a lot. Link to the Patreon is in the description below. And as always, I'll catch you later. See you in the next one.